Hi everybody, welcome to the Lexus Movie Theater. Actually, I'm in a Lexus LX. Welcome to the Lexus Virtual Classroom. It's time to learn all about the Lexus LX. Now we are going to dive into lots of buttons, bells, and whistles. So grab some popcorn or maybe even a notepad or just save this video because it's going to come in awfully handy. Make sure that you jump through different sections if you need to. In fact, if you don't have a Lexus Rear Entertainment System in your LX, you could skip that part altogether. It will not hurt my feelings. But if you do need to refer back to any of these videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified when we release a new technology video about your Lexus. Thanks for popping by. I said it. Okay, let's learn together. On the rear bumper, the parking sensors are located down low on the far corners and integrated into the center middle section. Parking sensors are located across the front bumper and integrated at a staggered higher point in the front grille. Headlamp washers are located just underneath the headlights. It operates like a tray and slides out and sprays washer fluid onto the headlights. Towing mount is hidden behind this cover. The fuel door is located on the right side of the rear of the LX. Your LX has towing capabilities and a towing prep package. Usually in the glove compartment, you'll find some accessories, a wiring harness, and an adapter for the lighting kit on your trailer. You'll also typically have a box containing the ball mount kit. If you plan on towing and you're not familiar with how to set up your trailer, please make sure to contact a trailer or towing professional so that you can tow safely in your LX. And the spare tire is located underneath the entire vehicle. Your lug nuts and wheel lock are located underneath the lug nut cover. This is a decorative cover with a wheel cap that can be removed when you need to have a tire changed. The smart access key for the LX has a lock, unlock, push and hold to power open the rear door button, and an alarm button. If you're still using your alarm button to locate your vehicle in its parking place, go ahead and change over to the Lexus app. The Lexus app has Lexus Inform Remote built right in. It even includes the ability to locate your vehicle in its last parking place. The Lexus Inform subscription service does rely on a cell signal to locate the vehicle, but once it's found it, just zoom in for more detail. To use the smart access key to open the back door on the LX, just push and hold. As long as you have the power back door turned on, the back door will open automatically. You want to make sure that the height of the back door is not going to interfere with your garage door motor or tracking system. So make sure to measure that space before powering open the back door on your LX inside your garage. You can also push and hold the rear door button to close. If you'd like to open the back door of the LX without taking your key fob out, you can because it's a smart key. So you can leave it in your pocket or put it in your bag and then you'll just use the touch pad that's located on the door handle underneath the Lexus logo. You'll feel a large touch pad. When you push, it will beep and then power open. To close the back door on the LX, just push the power back door button. Once it's closed, you can lock the LX by using the lock touch pad. There's just a small touch pad on the right hand side just below the Lexus logo. 
the large touch pad will unlock and open. The small touch pad will lock your LX. When you push the small touch pad, it will lock your entire vehicle. The tailgate on the LX opens manually. Just pull the lever to release and bring it down. The tailgate on the LX has a final power seal feature. Make sure, like it says, to keep your hands free when it's closing. You'll notice that you do have two small storage compartments that can be locked or unlocked. Just lift up to reveal your toolkit. Your toolbox is pretty heavy, so when you bring it out, carry it carefully so that you don't drop it. Slide to unlock. And when you open, you'll see all of the equipment needed for changing a tire, except for your jack. When you're finished with your tools, close it up, slide the locks into place, bring it back to its storage spot, and make sure to lock and re-tighten the straps. We want to make sure that everything that can move is secure and tied down so that it won't rattle or make any noise while you're driving. It's nice to have the tools handy and there when you need them, but we don't want to be reminded about them on our regular everyday drives. Your wheel lock key pouch. With your wheel lock key, just inside. After you've finished with the wheel lock key, make sure to restore it to the pouch and then nest it right in its spot so that it's there when you need it next time. Secure the cubbies and lock into place. This is a brand new LX that arrived in our inventory just a couple of days ago and it hasn't been set up for the guest yet. So I would like you to see all of the different accessory items that might come on your LX. A cargo net that can attach on the right and left side just inside the back tailgate that storage spot that we saw under the left panel is a great place to store your cargo net if you don't plan to use it on a regular basis. Carpeted and all weather floor mats and cargo mats are available on the LX. You should also receive a bracket for your front license plate. Make sure to hold on to that so that you can have it installed when your plates come in for your new vehicle. You have a 120 outlet on the left side at the rear of the vehicle. This is the cubby that holds your first aid kit and the jack for changing a tire. Just pull on the lever and then pop the door open. You'll notice that there are some tabs on the end. You want to make sure to be careful with those so you don't damage them. We want to make sure it can close securely when we're ready turn the door around, you'll find your first aid kit in its own little pocket. Just inside the compartment is the jack for changing a spare tire. When you're ready to put everything back together, just start with the tab end of the door. Fit the tabs into their slots and snap the right side into place by releasing the lever again. The LX is available in two and three row configurations. Detailed safety precautions about the power third row are located just on the right hand side at the back of the vehicle. Notice that in this configuration, the third row seats are stowed 
up to the side. When you want to put the seats down for passengers, you want to make sure that all of the anchor points in the floor of the vehicle are clear of any potential obstacles. The carpeted and all weather cargo mats from Lexus are designed specifically to accommodate the seats folding down or up without having to remove the cargo mat. Power third row seats can only be operated when the back door of the vehicle is open. To fold the third row seats down, you'll use the buttons inside the back door on the right hand side. Follow the arrows. Push and hold. If you release, it will stop in place and make a lovely alarm sound. Continue holding until it's latched in place. Once the seat is folded flat, use the handle to pull the seat back into position. You can snap the handle back into place and then raise the headrest. When the seat is up and in place, it can be reclined. To adjust the seat back position, just use the lever on the outside to recline the seat and to fold it forward. Note that when you use the side lever to fold the seat forward, the headrest is also going to release just so that there's plenty of space. If you have three rear cabin passengers, you need both seats in place for full seat support. Keep in mind that the LX is an eight passenger vehicle. For the middle headrest, you need to retrieve it from its storage compartment, zipped inside the back third row left seat. When you've removed it, you're going to put it into place. In order to allow the headrest posts to go into their slots, you have to push on the lever on the left side. And now you're all set. When you're ready to put the middle headrest back, just push the release on the left side so that you can lift up and completely remove it. Turn it over where the bars bend end toward the inside of the vehicle. Tuck the headrest into the storage area and zip to close. The seat belt for the center third row passenger is tucked up into the ceiling of the vehicle. Pull down on the strap to get some slack. Then you can remove the seat belt mechanism. Notice that there are two parts. The smaller piece creates the lap support and the main hook is the shoulder. Let me show you how to put this together. The main shoulder strap hooks in to the left side seat. The strap for the lap portion hooks in to the right side seat. Make sure to note that there's only one correct way to insert the small clip, hook down. If you try to insert with the hook facing up, it won't catch. So if you have a rear cabin passenger that's having trouble hooking the center section, make sure to tell them to insert with the hook facing down, and then it will snap into place. When your passenger is ready to get out, they need to release the shoulder main strap first because you're going to use this clip to release the lower portion. Use the metal clip to push on the red release and then it will slide apart. Now let's put it back up in the ceiling. To return the seat belt to its storage spot, tuck the small clip in and the large clip in. It'll be snug and quiet. When you don't have third row passengers, make sure to secure the seat belt so that it doesn't rattle as you drive. You'll lift up on the seat belt hook, slide the strap into place, and feed the hook into the hole. It should be a snug fit so that it's quiet as you drive. 
you'll find the same setup on the other side of the vehicle. I even recommend that you store your seatbelts this way when the seats are up and locked into place. Then you have less of a chance of any kind of rattles or sounds at the back of your vehicle. When you're ready to fold the seats flat, use the buttons on the right and follow the arrows. It's a pretty quick maneuver, so make sure that everyone is out of the way before you do it. To store the seats back up to the side, use your button and follow the arrow. Push and hold until the action is complete. When you hear the beeps, you're all set. Third row seats have covers for the floor anchor points tucked into the seat bottom. If you're going to keep your third row seats stored up most of the time, go ahead and pop these out of their storage spot and snap them into the anchor points in the floorboards. This helps to protect this area from any kind of dirt or any other items that might get trapped inside and we want to make sure that this area stays in good condition because these are the anchor points for your third row seating. Now with that in mind, make sure you always remove the anchor covers and put them back when you're going to put the seats in their seating position. To snap them back into place, just push. If you're pushing really hard, then it means it's not lined up correctly, and they do have kind of a squeeze mechanism to them. You'll notice that they have a bit of a raised edge. So you can always work one end in first and then snap the other into place, working side to side. You'll see two on each seat bottom because there are two anchor points in the floorboards for each seat. As long as you have your smart key on your person, in your pocket or in your bag, you can just use the smart access system to easily enter and start your LX. The LX has sensors on all doors. To unlock, just put your hand in the door handle. To lock the LX, just touch the indentation just at the front of all four passenger door handles. When you open the LX from a passenger door, the entire vehicle will unlock. Just put your hand in the door handle and now all of the doors on the LX are open. The LX has power folding mirrors that automatically fold in when you lock the vehicle as long as the feature is turned on. When you unlock, they'll open up for you. And when you lock, they'll close. It's a great way to know that your LX is locked, so go ahead and keep that feature turned on. I'll show you how to turn that on in just a moment. Let's take a look at some detailed features about the second row. You can slide the seat bottom with the button on the side, moving it forward or back. To recline the seat back, when you don't have a passenger sitting in the seat adjusting it for themselves, you're going to support the seat back at the shoulder, then lift up on the lever at the hip point, and just push it back until you have it where you want it. Storage for the seat belt connector in the second row. It does have a little pocket here, so if you have kiddos in the back seats that are snacking as you travel, make sure that you lift this up and vacuum that area out so that you don't end up with an extra snack for later. When the second row seat belts are not in use, use the seat belt holder to store them. Just like we saw in the third row, you'll raise up the seat belt clip, hook the strap into place, and slide the clip into the holder. When you have a passenger, they need to just push up on the clip and remove the strap. And then they'll have easy access. But in the meantime, if you don't have rear passengers, they'll be nice and 
quiet. You can adjust the height of the shoulder point for the seat belt just by pushing and releasing the lever up or down. For easy access to the third row, whether it's for passengers or cargo, you have the same lever that tilts the seat back to a recline, lift it up, lay the seat forward, and you'll feel that the seat bottom has already released. It's a good idea to have the covers on your rear entertainment system if you're going to store the seat in the upright position for any extended period of time. If your rear entertainment system does not have covers pre-mounted on the screens, make sure to locate the plastic pouch that contains both covers. The easiest way to cover the rear entertainment system is to start at the bottom with the soft strap. Once you have the soft strap attached to the bottom, just hook the top section on and slide it down into place. To remove, lift up, pull the top portion down, and then slide off. If you install it from the top first, it's a little bit more difficult to stretch and get on, and you might actually damage or pull the stitching. So just start from the bottom up, like this. If you're going to store the second row seats in the tumbled up position, it's always a good idea to keep the covers on your rear entertainment screens just to protect that surface. Also note that when you do tumble the seat up, you have a secure strap. Just release the cover remove the strap with the clip, snap the cover back into place so that doesn't get damaged. You can release to get more slack and then you'll come up to the secure handle on the B pillar behind the front seat. Hook on and then cinch down. You can even push a little bit to make sure it's snug. Tumbling the seat forward, lift up on the lever, the seat will come down and tumble up. Notice that we had plenty of room for the seat to fold, but it's not going to store up as flat and straight unless you move the front passenger seat forward. Once you move the front seat forward more, then you can tumble the second row up and secure with the strapping to the handle at the B pillar, just like we did before. If you're going to leave the second row seats up for an extended period of time, you might want to cover the anchor point wells that are in the floorboard of the vehicle. You have two different covers stored right under the seats, just like we saw in the third row. You do have to pull a little bit hard, but you're going to pop them out You'll see the clips and then just snap them into place on the floorboard of the vehicle. So your hook covers just help to make sure that items don't get stuck into the anchor points or when you have the seats folded down. Just snap them into place. You'll hear a click. Then you can remove the second clip. Then you can snap it into place in the floorboard. The next time that you want to fold the seat down into the seating position, make sure to remove these clips so that your seat anchors can lock into place. Pop them up. And snap them right back into the seat bottom. Now we can unhook our support strap. When you're ready to remove the strap, and put the seat back down in its seating position. Lift up on the Velcro, press down to give more slack. Then you can remove the hook. When you're ready to store it in its spot, you're going to roll it backwards. For the strap and hook to fit securely back into its storage area, line up 
the Velcro. This is going to give you the right amount of strapping to be able to make sure it will all fit in the cubby correctly. You're going to roll away toward the back of the vehicle and around the hook and just keep rolling. Remove the cover and tuck the top of the hook into the top of the cubby. Push the bottom of the hook in and then secure the cover. Once you've stored your strapping and you've made sure that both hook covers are snapped into place and that the anchor points in the floorboard are clear, you can put your seat back down. Push down until you hear it click. Then lift your seat back up and into position. If folding the armrest down doesn't create enough space between two second row passengers, you can fold the entire center section. The release is down at the bottom on the left-hand side of the center section. Just lift the handle and pull down from the headrest. You'll have more separation between two second row passengers and you've even created a pass-through to the rear of the vehicle if you need it for longer cargo. The second row outboard seats on the LX have lower anchor points for the latch system for car seats. So you'll just remove the Velcro and then inside you can feel for the anchor point. Keep in mind this is on the right and left outside seat of the second row. Car seat top tethers that are designed for the strap that comes under the headrest are located on the seat backs for the outside seats and at the very bottom of the center seat. To access the tether, pull down and then you'll see it. The back doors of the LX have a child lock feature push down to engage. If it's in the down or locked position, that means that a rear passenger cannot operate the door from the interior door handle. Someone would need to open the door from outside the vehicle. To cancel this feature and allow the rear cabin passengers to open the door from the inside, simply slide up on the locking mechanism and it is now deactivated. Second row windows have a manual sunshade. Just lift up on the tab and raise it into place. Notice that on each end you have a hook that needs to drop into an anchor spot on each side. To remove the sunshade, lift up and bring it toward you. Then you can slide it down and into place. Dome lights for the third row and second row. If you have rear cabin passengers, make sure to open the air conditioning vents in the ceiling on both sides of the vehicle. There are separate air conditioning vents for the third row and the second row. In the center of the second row, you have adjustments to open or close the vents for the lower portion of the rear air conditioning system. Everything else about the rear cabin climate control can be managed from the front main menu, but the vents themselves need to be opened manually. In the center armrest, you have a storage compartment that comes with an attachment for the remote control for the rear entertainment system. Rear climate controls, including heated and ventilated seats for both outboard seating positions, independent temperature positions for both outboard seating positions, right side 
and left side, the mode button to adjust where the air is flowing for the rear passengers, turning the system completely off, raising the fan speed, lowering the fan speed, and putting the system in automatic based on your temperature. To turn automatic off, note that you cannot push the button again. You need to take over control of the fan speed. It's the same with the main system for the front cabin. Coming to the front of the armrest, push to reveal your cup holders. Make sure that your cup holders are stowed before tumbling the seats forward. And down below on the left hand side, you have a 12 volt accessory charger. One of the first things to do on your new vehicle is to adjust your driver's seat position. The LX seat has a lot of different adjustments. From the front, you can raise the front seat cushion for support at your knees. You can also lower it if you need to retract that to be more comfortable, whatever your preference is. Slide the seat forward, back, raise the hip point or lower. Raise the front seat cushion or lower. Recline the seat back position. Recline, tilting back or bringing it forward. You also have lumbar support. Notice this recessed area for the seat bottom cushion and the seat back cushion. These items are linked to your driver position memory. The front portion of the seat support and the lumbar support are not. They're independently adjusted. For more lumbar support, push the button that brings the seat cushion out. For less, push the button toward the back of the vehicle that will retract that lumbar support feature. Our next step will be to adjust the steering wheel. The vehicle does need to be turned on for the steering wheel to be adjusted. To adjust your steering wheel, just use the toggle on the left side. It can go up, down, away, and toward you. Next, you'll adjust the side mirror position. Choose left and use the touchpad to adjust the driver side and right and use the touchpad to adjust the passenger side. Once you've set the position of your seat, steering wheel, and side mirrors, you want to save it to driver position memory. Push the word set, let it go, and push your driver number. You have memory buttons for three different drivers. Once you have saved your position, you can always recall it by pushing your number. A few other great features about your side mirrors. Remember we saw them fold in when we locked the vehicle? Make sure you see a light by the word auto in the top left corner of the controls. This button will power fold your mirrors in. This is helpful if you're going through a drive through Push the button and your mirrors will fold in. When you want to open your mirrors, push auto and then they will open up and auto will be turned on. Your side mirrors can also tilt and reverse. The position of tilt is customizable. All you have to do is have left or right selected for the mirrors to tilt and reverse. If you don't have a light for either left or right, the mirrors will not tilt. So if you prefer for your mirrors to stay in place, make sure to deselect. Don't have a light on for left or right. I'd like to show you how to program them in case you do want them to tilt and reverse, it's awfully nice to customize the angle. Let's demonstrate by selecting L for left, and we're going to make an adjustment. But before we do, we need to shift into reverse. Make sure you have your seat belt on, apply the brake, and shift, and shift into reverse. 
you'll notice your side mirrors will tilt down. To adjust the angle of tilt, make sure you have the mirror selected that you want to customize. Then use the touchpad to make your change. This is really helpful if you have a sprinkler system that you need to be careful of, or if you have a tight parking place that you are navigating. Once you've made your adjustment, shift back to park and it will be memorized. Now to test it, shift to reverse and the position you just programmed will appear. Looking at the buttons on the left side of the dash, you'll see your odometer trip meter button. Your odometer trip meter button will toggle you through odometer, trip A, trip B, back to your odometer. If you're on trip A or trip B, simply push and hold to zero it out. And a dial to adjust the brightness of your instrument panel. Notice that if you dial all the way to the right and then click it into place for the brightest position, it's not going to allow your navigation screen to go into night mode in the evening when it starts to get dark outside. That means your screen is going to be bright just like it is during the daytime. That can potentially cause glare. Make sure to dial just off of the brightest spot. Don't allow it to click to the right. Just unclick and you should be all set for day mode and night mode on your main screen. Continuing with the buttons on the left side of the dash. Automatic high beams. Push this in. You'll have a message on your dash to activate the automatic high beam switch. What that means is to turn your high beams on. Turn the high beams on by pushing the headlamp stock forward. Headlamp washers. If your headlamps are on and you push the button, it will spray your headlights. Push your heads up display button to turn on or off your heads up display. Looking past the steering wheel into the dash, you'll see the component that projects the heads up display onto the windshield. It actually projects so that it looks like it is floating above the hood. Your easy access mode allows the LX to be lowered two inches in two seconds when you turn off the vehicle. It makes it much easier to get in and out of your Lexus. You'll know that the feature is turned on when you see the seated figure icon on your dash. Let's take a look at the buttons on the right side of the dash. Your view monitor turns on your 360 degree camera. Make sure to have auto turned on so that your 360 degree monitor will turn on automatically at low speeds. The 360 degree monitor is exceptional for parking. You can push the button to toggle through the side view or the front and 360 view. If you don't see the yellow dynamic turn angle lines, click on this thumbnail to shift through your options. If you see them on the thumbnail picture, it means you need to click to select that view. Your parking sensors are turned on here. Just push and make sure that you see this icon lit in green on the dash. Coming down below, you can Adjust the sensitivity for your pre-collision system. Push the button to toggle through three different sensitivity levels. A long range buffer zone, mid range, or close range, depending on your preference. If you have a blank button, it just means that there's a feature available on a different package that's not on your vehicle. So just move to the next button. The power door off button cancels the operation of the power back door. You can still manually open the door, but if you would like to have the power feature turned on, make sure that it's not canceled. Power door off 
If you push that button in, you do not see an orange line at the top of the button, then you have canceled the power to the back door. This would be important to do if you're concerned about powering open the door in your garage. Push the button again to make sure that it's turned on. When you see the orange bar at the top, and your doors are unlocked, you can operate your power back door from inside the LX. Just push and hold until you hear a beep. If the power has been canceled to the back door, when you push the power back door button, it will not open and you will not hear a beep. Look for the orange bar to know that the power is activated. Headlights are controlled on the left side of the steering wheel. Make sure that the selector is pointing to the word auto so that they can automatically turn on and off as needed. If you turn the dial to the bottom where it says DRL off, that means daytime running lights off. In fact, everything is turned off. Come back to auto, daytime running lights, or low beam headlights. Now, if you choose low beam or daytime running lights yourself, make sure to come back to auto or off when you exit the vehicle so that your headlights will turn off for you, so that your headlights don't remain on. To allow your fog light to come on, just twist the dial so that the selector points to the fog light icon. Your fog lights will come on when your low beam headlights are on either with the auto selection or the manual selection. If you don't want your fog light on, just dial back to off. Windshield wiper controls are on the right side of the steering wheel. The position of the stock will tell you what mode you're in. If you're not sure, bring it all the way to the top for mist. So just push up and let it drop. That means you've done one swipe for mist and come down to the off position. Then you can bring it down again to auto. Once you're in the auto position, you can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic wipers with the dial. At the top, they're the most sensitive. That will take less water to activate the windshield wipers. If you've dialed down to the bottom, that's the least sensitive. It's going to take more water to get them to activate. Most people prefer to be kind of right in this range or at the most sensitive, but you'll get a feel for it as you drive. If you'd like to take over control of the wipers to either a low or high speed, just click down from the auto position, once for low and all the way at the bottom for high. If you're in low or high, you'll need to bring them to the auto position or off to deactivate. The rear wiper is either off, intermittent, or steady on with one speed. You can spray the front windshield by pulling the stock to you and spray the rear window by pushing away. Let's review the buttons on the steering wheel and all of the features that are connected to those buttons. Starting on the left side, volume for radio and phone. The arrows on the left side of the steering wheel will toggle you through your radio presets. In just a little while, I'll teach you how to set a radio preset so that you can use these arrows to move through your favorite radio stations. The mode button toggles you through audio sources. Just click and release to go from AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth, you name it. If you push and hold the mode button, it will pause or mute your audio. This is really handy if you're going through a drive through or in the middle of a conversation and you don't want to adjust the audio volume or turn your sound system off. When you're ready, simply push and hold mode again to get your music playing. Voice command button. We'll practice this in just a little bit. Answer a call, hang up a call, even ignore a call and allow it to go straight to your voicemail. Moving to the right side of the steering wheel, all of the buttons in the top panel operate your multi-information display. This is the display in the center of your gauges. Use the left or right arrows to move you through 
all of your information menus. You can use the up and down arrows when you see a slide bar in a menu. Just arrow down or up for additional screens. You have multiple drive information screens that are customizable. We'll show a customization in just a moment. Keep arrowing down for an eco indicator, a digital speedometer, your outside temperature, and your sway warning. Your sway warning is part of your lane departure alert feature. If your lane departure alert has given you multiple corrections in a row, you'll see a sway warning pop up with a picture of a coffee cup and a message to take rest. The concern is that you're a fatigued driver and the vehicle is concerned for your safety. Arrow down for a blank screen if that's your preference. Arrow down again and you'll loop right back to the top. Pushing the right arrow button, you can see the wheel position of the front wheels. This is helpful with parking, especially if you're parking on a hill and you want to make sure that you're turning your wheels in toward the hill for safety. Pushing the down arrow button, we have a slide bar indicating we have additional screens. Coming down for tire pressure monitor system, the system monitors all five tires. That includes your full size spare tire. Arrowing down again for your oil maintenance mileage. Note that you're going to have an oil change typically every 10,000 miles, but you'll service every 5,000 miles or six months, whichever comes first. Arrowing back up to the top of the screen for wheel position. Arrow to the right for a compass, to the right again for a music summary screen, to the right again for your lane departure alert monitor. To the right again for service related messages, including things like low fuel. Arrowing to the right for our final item, settings. The first item you can customize in your settings menu on the multi-information display is lane departure alert. Push the button with the dot in the middle of all the arrows to open an item. To customize the type of alert you receive from the lane departure system, push the dot. Your two options are an audible alert or a steering wheel vibration. If your steering wheel vibration is not selected, push the up arrow to highlight it and then push the dot to select it. You're going to hear and feel the steering wheel vibration. Once you've made your selection, push the go back button. Arrow down to adjust the sensitivity. Push the dot to toggle between standard and high. Arrow down to turn the sway warning off or on. You can also adjust the sensitivity of the sway warning. It's recommended that rather than turning the sway warning off, you customize the sensitivity to low rather than high or standard, if you feel like it's giving more correction than you prefer. Arrowing down brings us back to the top of the lane departure alert customization. So now push the go back button to exit this menu. Arrow down for blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert. Just push the button to toggle things on or off. You'll notice the icon light up in your side mirrors for blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert. The blind spot monitor notification is visual only. Rear cross traffic alert will give a visual and audible warning if a vehicle is detected crossing at the rear of your LX while you're in reverse. Push the go back button, arrow down to heads up display. Push the dot to open, push the dot to select brightness and position, push the right arrow to make your heads up display brighter, and the left arrow to make it more dim. Most people prefer the brightest setting possible. You can also raise or lower the heads up display 
with the up and down arrows. When you're moving the display, you'll notice that it has a bracket around it, just to make it easier to see the positioning. When the heads up display is positioned where you'd like it, push the go back button. Now you can customize what appears in the heads up display. Navigation, driving assist information like park assist, the compass, and audio. Arrow down to come back to the top of your list. Push the go back button to exit this menu item. Arrow down for scheduled maintenance. This is where a technician would come in and reset your maintenance information after completing a service. If you've opened this item by mistake, press go back. Arrow down for oil maintenance. Oil maintenance is another menu item that will be customized by a technician after they complete an oil change. Press go back and come to meter settings. Push the dot to open. You can customize the language of the display from English, French, or Spanish. Push go back. You can customize units from miles or kilometers, depending on where you live. You can turn the pop-up eco indicator on or off just by highlighting the item and pushing the button with the dot in the middle of all the arrows. The eco indicator pops up when you're driving in a fuel efficient way. Arrow down. The item that says switch settings allows you to customize a shortcut button for the multi-information display. You can do this by pushing and holding the hard button with that same icon on any screen. It will allow you to set that screen as your favorite. Push the dot on the switch settings line for instructions. It's telling you to display the screen that you want to be registered and hold the button. Let's take a look at how to do that. Press the go back button to clear. Press the go back button to move out of meter settings. Push the right arrow to come to a drive information screen. Arrow down to the screen with range. Let's say you wanted this screen to be your favorite. Push and hold the menu button on the steering wheel. You'll receive this message. Switch setting, change registered screen, arrow up, highlight the word yes, push the dot to select. Now, if you have on purpose explored your menu or accidentally moved through your menu, just push your shortcut button and you'll come right back to your favorite screen. If you change your mind about the screen that you would like to save, just select your new favorite screen, push and hold the button, and make a change. From our main information screen, let's shortcut to settings by pushing the left arrow button. Push the dot to come back into our meter settings. Arrow down. We just explored switching the settings for our shortcut menu button. Let's arrow down to the next item. Drive Info 1 and Drive Info 2 can be customized. A lot of people like to have their fuel economy range on their first Drive Information screen. Highlight Drive Info 1, push the dot to select it, and then make your customizations. If you would like to change one of these items to your range, just highlight it, push the dot, and then you can scroll through all of the options for what can appear in your drive information screen. Different fuel economy settings, average speed, if you are using an average speed calculation as a heavy commuter. Coming down, you can even have elapsed time if you choose elapsed time after start, that lets you know how long the engine's been running. So if you would prefer to take a break on a long drive after a certain period of time, get up and walk around a little bit, 
This is a good reminder of how long you've been driving in the vehicle. Arrow down and there's our range. Push the dot to select. Push the go back button. These are your new Drive Info 1 screen settings. The current fuel economy in a bar type that shows as you drive and the range for distance, how many miles are left in the tank. If you'd like to see what it looks like, push the go back button again, push go back to clear out of meter settings, and push the right arrow to go to your main information menu. There we have it. Current fuel economy in a bar type and average fuel economy Right now, it's telling me to refuel because we are close to empty. When your fuel level is low, you'll have a pop-up on your navigation screen asking if you'd like to search for nearby gas stations. You'll also receive a fuel light in yellow and a message on your multi-information display letting you know that your fuel level is low. And when you have plenty of fuel in the tank, you'll see all of the miles left on that particular tank of gas under range, just like we customized. Shortcutting back to settings by pushing our left arrow button, push the dot to open meter settings, and let's continue through our menu. You could then customize Drive Info 2 if you'd like, arrowing down to our clock, Push the dot to change from a 12-hour clock to a 24-hour clock. This is for the digital clock on your multi-information screen. Arrow down to pop-up display. Push the dot. This feature allows you to choose whether or not you have intersection guidance and incoming calls pop up on your multi-information display as you're driving. Push the go back button. Arrow down, you can customize the button color for your screens, blue or gold. Pushing go back, you can arrow down and push the dot to reset all of your settings to the factory default setting, if that's what you prefer. Arrow down to circle back to the top of the meter settings. Push go back. Arrow down to come back to the top of the main settings screen for the multi-information display. Arrow to the right to come back to your main information screen or push your shortcut button to go back to your favorite. Turn on and off your lane departure alert here. When you click to turn it on, you'll have a message on your screen letting you know that lane departure alert is unavailable below approximately 32 miles an hour. Let's arrow to the right to our lane departure alert monitor. When you see the lane markers light up solid, that lets you know that the system is registering the lane markers on the road. If you start to veer out of the lane without having your blinker turned on, you're going to get the warning that you have set up, either the vibration of the steering wheel or the beeps, whatever you prefer. If you have your blinker on, you're going to override the system because it knows that you are intentionally leaving the lane. Your following distance for radar cruise control is operated with this button. Let's turn radar cruise control on. You'll follow the arrows to activate radar cruise control. Push the button on the end to turn it on or off. When you turn radar cruise control on, you'll have a message on your multi-information display. You can toggle through your following distance, long range, mid range, and close range, just with a push of a button. To set your speed, click down. If you have canceled by either pulling the stock toward you or tapping on the brake, you can resume by pushing up. You can also increase your speed or decrease your speed, clicking up or down as you need. Push the button in to turn it off. Notice that you can push and hold to turn on traditional cruise control instead of radar cruise control. 
watch what happens. Radar Cruise Control would give us not only our message, but an icon with a picture of a car and an arrow. The car represents the following distance or the buffer zone between our vehicle and the vehicle traveling in front of us. The arrow represents the speed. If we turn on traditional cruise control by pushing and holding the button, it will switch to speed only. With traditional cruise control, you are completely in charge of the brake. Paddle shifters are located on either side of the steering wheel. Just keep your hands at the optimal driving position of three and nine. Then you can feel the paddle shifters right behind your fingers, pull toward you for upshifting on the right side, downshifting on the left side. To use paddle shifters, you need to shift to the sequential or sport drive position. From drive, just push the gear shift to the left until you see S lit in blue. You can upshift and downshift right on the gearbox if you prefer. This is something that can be handy if you are in the mountains on a long descent and you want to do some engine braking on your way down. If you've shifted into sport or sequential mode, you can always shift back at any time just by pushing the gear shift to the right, you'll be back in automatic drive mode. Moving up from our steering wheel controls, you'll see the three home link buttons to pair a gate or garage door operation located just under your rear view mirror. You also have the button to control the auto dimming feature for your rear view mirror. Auto dimming allows the mirror to dim at night when it detects oncoming light from vehicles at the rear. Moving up to the center headliner, you have a glasses storage compartment, touch operation for your dome lights, door mode for your dome lights. Push that button so that you have a green light for door mode. I highly recommend that you leave door mode turned on. It allows your dome lights to turn on when a door is open and turn off when the door is closed. Controls to tilt the back of the moonroof with the up and down button or open and close the moonroof. Your Safety Connect or SOS button. You should see a green light for that connection. You have a complimentary trial subscription for Safety Connect as well as all of the other compatible Lexus connected technologies for your LX. Moving down to our lower center console. We have a charging station to locate USB ports for charging as well as playing music, an auxiliary port, and you have an optional Qi wireless charger. Push the button to turn the charger on. As long as you have a phone that fits, and is compatible for wireless charging, you'll see a yellow light when it's charging and your phone is not at a full charge. You'll see a green light when your phone is at a full charge. Make sure to note that wireless charging is not the fastest charging. If you need a faster charge, make sure to use the USB ports or the 12 volt charger that's located on the right hand side. Push again to close. Coming down, our cup holders are on the right and the automatic parking brake is on the left. The LX has an automatic electronic parking brake. Lift up to turn on the emergency parking brake. Keep holding it up until the automatic mode engages and you'll have a message on your dash letting you know that the automatic parking brake has been engaged. To turn it off, push down. Continue holding to turn off the automatic mode. 
you'll have a message on your dash. Let's take a look at some of the commonly used features on the lower center console. Toward the end of the video, we'll take a closer look at the off-roading capabilities of the Lexus LX. For now, we're going to focus on commonly used items that you might need every time you drive. Seat climate buttons are located on the outside edges of the center console. The driver's side also has the control for the heated steering wheel. The first push of the button turns the automatic mode on. The next push will engage the manual mode at the highest level, medium and low setting. The next push will turn it off. The fan works in the exact same way, high, medium, and low. Your remote touch device is used to operate items on the screen that don't have a hard button shortcut. You have a button for your map, your menu, a go back button. The arrows will allow you to move page by page in different menu items and zoom in and zoom out on the map. Your selector just slides around and can be controlled easily with your fingertips or your thumb and your index finger. Just position it to highlight the item that you want and then push down to click or select something. You can also select with the enter buttons that are located on either side of your remote touch device. Nestled into all of the off-road capability controls, you have your drive mode selector. So if you're not going to go off-roading, don't ignore this button. You might want to ignore everything else. That's just fine. But this dial is going to allow you to choose from a comfort mode, eco mode, normal, customized mode, Sport and Sport S Plus. You can twist to the left to engage comfort mode, to the left again for eco mode, push down for normal, push down again for the customized mode, turn to the right for Sport S, and to the right again for Sport S Plus. When you use your drive mode selector, you are making changes to the throttle response, the steering feel for Sport and Sport S Plus, and the suspension system where possible. When you make changes to the drive mode selector, you'll also see a lighting theme change and a notification. Comfort, will say comfort and light in blue. Eco will have a blue base light and say eco in green with an additional notification on the main screen. Pushing down for normal and you'll see those notifications clear. Pushing down for customize, you'll see customize on both screens. You'll customize those settings in the main setup menu. Turning to the right for Sport S and Sport S Plus, you'll have a red lighting theme and the titles of your drive modes. Coming back to the hard button shortcuts for audio and climate. You have audio hard button shortcuts and climate control hard button shortcuts. Nested right in the middle are your hazard lights. Let's take a look at our audio system next. Just above your hazard lights, you have your CD player. It is a single disc player, and it's also where you put the DVD for the rear entertainment system. Power and volume, tuner dial so you can tune to a radio station. If you don't want to use the tuner dial, you can always do it by voice command. Let's open our radio screen just by pushing the button. 
you'll see the large format radio screen open on the left hand side. Push the media button, then you'll have access to other sources like Bluetooth audio. But let's come back to our radio screen and talk about the different views that are available. This particular view is called Mixed Presets. That allows you to save presets in any type of order, AM, FM, satellite, all mixed together, just based on your favorite stations being right at the top. You can also customize how many pages of presets you have, six as the max, and one page as the minimum. If you prefer to sort your presets by type, click on individual presets. This will give you two pages of presets for satellite, two for AM, two for FM. So you would just come to source, choose your next source, and then you would see the two pages that you have allocated for that particular source. Most people do prefer to use mixed presets. If you don't have a lot of favorite stations, it's awfully nice to just come down to one or two pages and put all your favorites in the order that you like. Let's set a radio preset by voice command. We're going to use the voice command button, push and release, wait for the beep and give our command. Please say a command. Tune to 99.1. Once you have the station playing, you can save it. Use your highlighter, select the place that you would like to save your station, and either push down or use the enter buttons on the side, push and hold until it beeps and changes. Then you can go ahead and save more presets. In mixed preset view, you can save in any order. For satellite stations, you can say the station name or channel number. Please say a command. Tune to the bridge. Once you have it playing, pick your spot and push and hold to save. If you don't want to use the mode button on the steering wheel to toggle through your sources, just click source right at the top and all of your audio sources are available on one screen. For additional settings, come to Info. Not only will you see whatever broadcast information is available, but you can come to Options and turn on and off your HD signal, your FM information, or come to Type to view a genre list. Push the Go Back hard button shortcut or click Go Back on the screen. Select Back to come back to your info view. You can scan, view a station list, or customize your sound settings for whatever sound source you're listening to. If you make changes to the treble, mid-range, or bass, note that you're only changing it for that sound source. So if you listen to different types of programming, it's a good idea to make customizations on each sound source. If you make a change to the fader or the position or placement of where the sound is coming in the vehicle, that's going to apply to all sound sources. Click Settings, and you can customize the number of radio presets that appear for your mixed preset view. One page with six presets would be the least, and six pages, 36 presets total, the most. Pushing Go Back, Go Back again, Go Back a third time, and then click Presets to come back to your preset screen view. Our climate control hard button shortcuts, temperature for the driver and the passenger, auto for the fan, everything off 
as long as you don't have your cool box turned on. If your LX is equipped with a cooler box, it's located underneath the armrest. You'll hear the fan blowing with the cooling mechanism. Also notice that there is a power button. When you turn it off, the fan will turn off. Take note of one other detail. When the cool box is turned on, you cannot completely turn off your climate control system. That's because it is trying to maintain the cool box temperature. Turn off the cool box, and then you can turn off your climate control system. Front defrost, rear and side mirror defrost. Where the air is coming from, recirculating air, outside air, or automatic, letting the vehicle choose whether it's using recirculating air or outside air, using the smog sensor and the speed that the vehicle is traveling. Less fan, more fan, climate concierge, which is like auto on steroids, and airflow mode, how the air is flowing to you. Let's take a look at these items on the screen. Push menu, select climate. You'll see most of the hard button shortcuts represented with soft button icons on the screen. Driver's temperature, passenger temperature. You can even customize where the air is flowing in the zone for the passenger and the driver independent from one another. So not only are the temperature settings customizable, but the airflow mode is customizable. From the bottom left, we can turn auto on for the fan. We can turn the AC compressor on or off four zone climate control on or off and eco heat and cool on or off. Selecting to control the rear cabin climate control, selecting auto to turn the rear cabin climate on but not in auto mode, simply click to turn the fan on and then all of your temperatures from the previous settings will appear. Or powering off. Pushing the go back button, you have an additional menu for a windshield wiper de-icer and a pollen filter. Pushing go back, if I push the Climate Concierge button. Climate Concierge is a much more advanced version of auto. It actually can detect surface temperature in different zones of the vehicle to help make each cabin passenger more comfortable. You'll notice that everything engages in the auto mode. This means that based on the temperature that I select, the airflow mode and fan speed will change automatically. I'm adjusting the passenger side temperature and if you noticed the fan speed increased and the airflow changed to face only. As I adjust the passenger temperature back up, it will again customize and make changes. To turn climate concierge or auto off, you have to just take over the fan speed and the airflow mode. If you turn four zone off, then all of the temperatures will sync in the vehicle to the driver's selected temperature. Four zone just means four independent temperatures are capable. Another popular way to view climate control is on the right side menu. Let's push the map button 
and then click on climate for the right side screen. You have all of your basic climate control functionality on the small screen side anytime you open this up. Also on the right side menu, you have trip information, quick dials, which are a replacement for speed dials when you have a telephone set up and active on Bluetooth, an audio screen for your radio presets, and a small map in case you want another menu item open on the left side. If you have the map open on the left side and you would like to go back to full screen, slide your mouse to the map side. Then click on the top right corner on the full screen icon. Make sure to note that this icon does not appear if you are in a Bluetooth phone call. Click down to go to full screen map. You have a destination search shortcut right on the screen. Click DEST to open your destination search menu. Some of the items in this menu are not going to be available when the car is in motion, so it's great to know about voice commands that are available while you drive. One of the most popular voice command shortcuts is to say, go home. Once you've programmed a destination to this shortcut, simply saying, go home, gets you on your way. Make sure to note that for safety reasons, we always recommend that you program something close to home rather than your exact home address. An address can even be entered by voice command. Just remember that anytime you give a voice command, you're going to press and release the talk button, wait for the beep, and give your command. You can give voice commands from any screen. Push and release the talk button, wait for the beep, and give your command. Please say a command. Enter an address. Please say the full address. 9200 Grogan's Mill Road, Spring, Texas. Nine two zero zero Grogan's Mill Road, Spring, Texas. Is this correct? Yes. Once the destination is programmed in, you can review three different routes as long as the vehicle is not in motion, or you can start to drive or click OK. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Once you're on your way, if you no longer need the navigation support, you can click destination, and delete destination right at the top, or better yet, use voice command. Please say a command. Delete destination. Would you like to delete destination? Yes. Please say a command. Previous destinations. Please say the list number. Number one. So that command will pull up your five most recent searches. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Another way to end your route. Please say a command. Cancel route. So if you say cancel route, you don't have to give the confirmation of delete destination. But if you have multiple destinations programmed in, using the delete destination command will let you choose which one you would like to eliminate. With cancel route, it clears everything. Destination Assist is a subscription service with a live operator that helps you input destinations into the system remotely. When you get a new LX, 
It comes with a complimentary trial for one year for Destination Assist. You can also voice command by saying, call Destination Assist. Points of interest can also be searched for as long as you select the state or province for your search. Simply click on the alphabet and then make your selection. Then you can search by name, category, or even a registered business phone number. Or, my favorite, voice command. Please say a command. Find Starbucks. Please say the list number. Number one. Is this correct? Yes. Would you like to go directly or add it to your existing route? Go directly. So if I chose to add it to my route, I could decide if I wanted to go to this location first or after the item that was already in my queue. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Please say a command. Cancel route. And we're all set. Moving from the top corner on our compass, you can change your map view. Just click down on the compass. You'll notice that the horizon line is present when you're in 3D mode. Click again. If you see the red in for north, this means that north will be fixed at the top of the map. The circle and the triangle representing the vehicle will turn, but the map will stay in place. Click again, and the direction that you're facing will be at the top of the map, allowing the map to turn as you turn. It's going to look more like a smartphone map. You can zoom in and out with the plus and minus soft buttons on the screen, or use your hard button arrows down by your map and menu buttons. The front facing arrow will zoom you in, the back facing arrow will zoom you out. The perspective scale will appear at the bottom of the screen for just a short time, but it will hold your perspective at the top just under the compass. The perspective is just a representation of how far up above your vehicle you're viewing the area. It's kind of like sending a camera up above your vehicle. Most people like to view from 300 to 700 feet perspective. Another item to note, click the menu item to open navigation options for map mode views. These items are going to pop up automatically as you drive while you have a destination programmed in. Map information allows you to add point of interest icons, trace a route if you are in an area that isn't mapped well. You can leave little dots along the map to follow your way out. Traffic information so that you can show the green, yellow, and red traffic flow lines. Speed limit information so that the navigation system can show speed limit signs where it has the data for that area. You can come in to edit your route. Once you have a route in the system, you can then click preferences to turn things on and off like toll roads if you don't have a toll tag on your vehicle. Push and go back. If you have paused the guidance, you can also resume guidance. Looking at our main menu, you'll also notice that there is a destination shortcut as our very first item. If you click on destination, it's going to bring you to the exact same place that the destination search button on your map would bring you. So let's come back to our main menu. We have already explored destination through navigation, our audio system for radio and media, and our climate control system. Let's take a look at pairing a phone. 
Once you have a phone paired to the system, you'll be able to access your phone settings. If you've never paired a phone, you can press phone and then answer yes and follow the prompts. If you already have a phone paired to the system and you need to remove it and add a new phone or just add an additional phone, come to Setup, Bluetooth, and then follow the prompts. It's going to tell you to operate your device. Coming to your settings, Bluetooth, make sure Bluetooth is turned on, and then you'll see the device name. Lexus LX. Follow the prompts. Click pair and then allow so that your contacts call history can transfer to the vehicle. Once you see that the phone is connected to the system, you can give permission in the phone for text messages to come through. Come back to your device, go to information, show notifications, make sure it's turned on. If you're using an Android phone, you'll be prompted to do this during the setup process. The wording is just a little different. If you've never paired your phone to the system before, it might ask you to update the Lexus app suite. Go ahead and click now and follow the prompts. If you'd like to continue to work in the vehicle while it's downloading, click download in background. Back to our main menu. You'll be able to access your phone once it's paired through Bluetooth. My favorite way to call, of course, is with voice command. You push the talk button, wait for the beep, and then say call and give the name of the person exactly as they're listed in your contact list. With an iPhone paired to Bluetooth, you can send text messages through the mobile assistant. It's actually Siri. You're just going to push and hold on the telephone answer button and then give your command. Send a text to Ava. What do you want to say? Hi, Ava. I hope you're having a great day. Your message to Ava says, Hi, Ava. I hope you're having a great day. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay. It's sent. And you're all set. Back to our main menu. Once you have the Lexus app suite installed and open on your phone and you followed the steps to update the version on your LX, click Lexus app suite to take advantage of the compatible apps inside the Lexus app suite. Back to our main menu for information, fuel consumption information, a traffic incident list, and the most popular item, weather. You can check the current forecast, a three-day forecast that will allow you to click into more details for each day, push the go back button, and you could explore a six and 12 hour breakdown of the weather where your vehicle is located. Notice that it does require the HD signal and it's powered by the Weather Channel. It even lets you know how long it's been since its last update. Pushing Go Back, it will keep track of your recently checked locations, a list of national cities that are available for the service, local cities, and a Doppler weather map. It looks like we've got some rain in the area. Back into Info, Azure Vehicle has service alerts. It will track them in the vehicle alert history. Pushing go back, go back again, and we're back at our main menu. We've already explored our climate control system, our last item, 
is setup. The setup menu is pretty extensive. Most items don't require your attention. They already come set up from the factory. But if you would like to customize some different features, I'll explain what those are now. Come to general. Clock, of course, is a very popular item because if you're in an area that participates in daylight saving time, you will need to turn it on or off depending on the time of year. You can set auto adjust for the time zone, but that won't take into account daylight saving time. You can customize the language of the display, Spanish, French, and English. Units of measurement for miles or kilometers. Again, we can see the button color selection, your keyboard layout, and you can either click on the arrow to move down or use the hard button shortcut arrows by your map and menu buttons. You can customize the startup image by following the steps in your owner's manual for formatting an image to a USB and loading it onto the system. Auto screen change. Turning this feature on allows the map to automatically turn back on if you've changed screens. For example, let's turn the feature on and choose our radio screen on the left side. Open our map and now push the radio button. If we don't take any action on the audio screen, it's going to default back to our map view after just a few moments. If you prefer to keep your screen on what you've selected, you would need to turn auto screen change off. Otherwise, it's going to do what it just did and default back to the map. Whatever your preference, push menu, Come back to setup. And if you're someone who would like to leave the audio screen on all the time, come down to auto screen change and turn it off. And then you're in charge of what's on the screen. These are the items we can customize for our remote touch device. The selection sound, pointer sound, error sound, pointer sound volume, and the most important item, the feedback force. This is the technology that allows the mouse or the highlighter to be attracted to a clickable surface. If you feel like your mouse is hard to operate, select feedback force, bring it all the way down to the least sensitive setting. Then start working your way up as you get more comfortable. Pushing go back. You can always do delete personal data if you need to clear the settings in your system. Software update and grace note updates are done through service only as needed. Voice setup. This is where you can come to adjust the volume of the voice command system. Guidance will be at this volume. Guidance will be at this volume. I always recommend that you turn it down rather than off, just so that you're not missing out on any voice command features that are available. Pushing go back. Bluetooth is where we came to pair a phone. Audio. These are the settings that we explored while we were in our audio screen. Traffic detail customizations that are available. And then coming to the next page. Navigation. The main item here is to set up something close by your home for your go home shortcut. Pushing go back. Vehicle customization. This is where you can customize which doors open when you touch the driver's door handle. All doors or driver's door only. 
There are a lot of other customizations that are available. One of the ones that I like the most is automatic door unlock by shift to park. That means that right now, when you put your LX into park, all of the doors unlock automatically. I prefer to turn this off so that when I'm ready to unlock the vehicle, I just push the button to unlock in the door handle. Climate settings, light settings, come down to other vehicle settings, driver's seat, easy exit. If you are tall, you want to have driver's seat, easy exit on full. You might even want to have it on full no matter what. But if you're like me and you're not quite so tall, you may want to have it on partial because then the seat won't slide back quite so far and it makes it a little bit easier to reach the brake pedal when you're starting up the vehicle. Now, if you prefer to leave it on full so that you have easier access getting in and out, you can always just put your seat belt on and it will bring you up to your driver position before you apply the brake. Pushing go back. You can customize items for the park assist feature, including volume, turning the display image off, and customizing the sensitivity of the front and rear parking sensors. Pushing go back. Blind spot monitor can be adjusted for a dim or bright setting. The volume of the beeps for rear cross traffic alert and the approach timing. So how quickly early, middle, or late, or only in your blind spot is it going to detect and warn you about a vehicle approaching your blind spot. Push and go back. Your customized drive mode is customized under drive mode customization in vehicle settings. You can change the powertrain, from power, normal, or eco, the chassis, sport, normal, or comfort to customize the feel, and the climate from normal to eco. Once you've made those settings changes, when you choose the customize mode on your drive mode selector, that's what you would be engaging. Push and go back, go back again. Phone customizations for a phone paired to the Bluetooth system. Push and go back. Detailed customizations for the Lexus app suite. The main thing to change here is the notification. Do you wanna be notified about the data usage once per drive every time you launch the app suite or never. The thing to keep track of here is that the app suite is a system streaming from your phone, so it operates off of your cell phone's data plan. Push and go back. And our data services. Remember that on that weather screen, we saw that it was using the HD signal to pull the weather information. Keep in mind that your traffic and weather are pulling from HD, but they can also be strengthened with your mobile signal. And go back again, and we've completed our menu. Our last two items to cover are the rear entertainment system and the off-road capability features that are located in the center console. Let's review the rear entertainment system. Inserting a disc, and the system will automatically begin reading the DVD. Notice that because we're in park with the emergency brake on, we're actually able to watch the video on the front screen. It's not going to go to full screen, it's left side only. You are required to be in park with the emergency brake on. If you shift out of park, 
then the video will only show on the rear screens. If you're going to be using your rear entertainment system on a regular basis, follow this quick tip to make it easy to access the controls on the front screen. Come to Source, select Reorder at the bottom. Come to the second page by clicking on the arrow. Select Rear, and then choose the left-facing arrows to move it to the front page. You can even keep moving it until you have it in the exact spot that you would like. Push the Go Back button, and now the rear controls are right on your main audio source screen. Let's click Rear to open the controls. You can press Power to turn it on from the front. You can also choose Speaker Output if you would like the sound on the video to play through the speakers in the vehicle. If you don't want the sound from the video to play on the car's speaker system, make sure to deselect speaker output. Then you can come to source and choose a different audio source for the front screen while they listen to the video sound at the back. To open the rear entertainment controls from the front, click source and disc. Once you open your DVD screen, you'll see that the settings look an awful lot like a DVD player at home. When you insert a disc, if it starts to play the sound through the vehicle speakers automatically, come back to source, choose rear, and make sure that speaker output has been turned off. If it has, just come back to source and choose your preferred audio source that's not a disc so that you can have your own sound coming from the speakers on the vehicle and they can have the movie at the back. The lower pockets inside the doors are a great place to store your wireless headphones. Make sure to install the batteries that are provided with each headset and the remote just push the power button to turn on your wireless headsets. For a proper fit, you'll see R for right on the same side as the power, channel selector, and volume side of the headphones. You'll see an L for left on the opposite side. There are no controls for power or volume on the left side. The remote is stored just inside the armrest. From the source screen on the back, make sure that you have the correct monitor selected when you're giving a command from the remote. Also make sure to point the remote at the screen for it to register your command. Push the enter button. And now we have our DVD playing at the rear Headphone sound is coming through loud and clear while the separate audio source is playing at the front. You can stop the video, push the source button, and notice that on the top right corner, you have the same opportunity to turn on or off speaker output. If you look closely at the logo, you'll see headphone sound pointing to or playing through speakers. If you want separate sound sources for the front, make sure there is no light for the speaker output on the front or rear system. Come back down to disc and push enter to play. To speaker output, if you do that, you'll notice that now the video is playing on the speakers of the vehicle as well as the headsets. So to separate those sound options, deselect 
on the screen and then choose a new sound source for the front cabin. Push to open and reveal volume control for connected headphones. So that's if you plug in with a headphone set, an HDMI port, and an auxiliary port. Push to close and down below on the left hand side. The LX is designed to be an extremely capable off-road vehicle. It is full-time four-wheel drive. To take advantage of the off-road capabilities, make sure you have your seat belt on, shift into neutral, then push down and move the toggle to low four. Once you're in the low four position, you'll notice the message that says vehicle stability control is turned off and that the pre-collision braking system is unavailable. You'll also see the view change for your 360 degree monitor. You're able to monitor both sides of the vehicle, the front of the vehicle, and even items that might be right below the front bumper. Keeping this feature in auto mode will allow all of these items to engage automatically. You even have a yaw sensor built in to the system for viewing your angle in extreme off-road conditions. After you've shifted into low four, you can go back to park and then change your other settings. The first thing to change is your multi-terrain selector. The multi-terrain selector dial is also the same dial that you use to set the speed for crawl control. If you turn crawl control on, then this dial is setting the speed that you want to travel. You can also engage the turn assist feature. But before you turn crawl control on, choose your terrain setting. Shifting into low four, coming to drive, making a selection for the terrain surface. Mud and sand, loose rock, mogul, rock and dirt, rock. Just turn the dial to make your selection. Once you've selected your terrain surface setting, turn on crawl control. To turn crawl control on, you need to shift into gear. Press the button and crawl is activated. Then you can turn the dial to select your speed. One, two, three, four, or five miles per hour. When crawl control is turned on, you'll have additional support images through your 360 degree camera monitor system. Crawl control activated, crawl control deactivated. Once crawl control is activated, if you're going to need additional support for inside braking for tighter turns, turn on, turn assist. You'll see turn assist, crawl control, multi-terrain surface are all activated. To lock your center differential, push the button, lock the center differential. If your wheels become stuck in a ditch or if you're driving on a very slippery or bumpy surface. When the center differential lock icon stops flashing, you'll know that the differential is locked with a 50-50 power split. Under normal driving conditions, the drive power will favor the rear wheels. 60% of the power typically in the back and 40 in the front. But the full-time four-wheel drive system allows the vehicle to shift power where it needs it for best traction. Traction control will automatically turn off when you shift into low four. For second start, the electronically controlled transmission can be activated just by pushing the button. Turning on second start, you'll see the indication for second start also on the right gauge cluster. Adaptive height control is adjusted just by pushing the button down to lower and up to raise. 
You can also turn off the adaptive height control by pushing the off button. You'll see an indication on the dash to let you know what position the LX is currently in and if adaptive height control is turned on or off. Under normal driving conditions, the height of the LX will adjust automatically because of the adaptive suspension and I have easy access engaged, you'll notice that currently the LX is in the low position to make it easier to get in and out of the vehicle. As you drive, the height will change to normal range. The high height mode is available under 18 miles an hour. The low mode is available at seven miles an hour or less. If the vehicle exceeds seven miles an hour, it is going to automatically adjust to the normal height. Just push the buttons again to turn each feature off. When you turn crawl control off, turn assist is also turned off. To go back to high four for your normal driving, you do need to shift out of gear into neutral and then toggle up. Well, I hope you learned a lot. I'm almost out of popcorn. I may have melted your brains, so feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks again for visiting us in the Lexus Virtual Classroom, and we'll see you next time.